Hi, and welcome to Morning Coffee with Pizan Academy. I'm Deanna, and I want to talk to parents about some things that they can do in these trying times. Now, I'm in Seattle, and we're dealing with a lot of changes up here. Families are now having to deal with their kids not being able to go back to school, both public and private, until April 24th. And so we wanted to offer some advice to parents who are facing these new challenges using what we know from the homeschool community to offer some assistance for parents that are now faced with kids having to learn at home. The first thing that needs to be done is to set boundaries. Now you'll want to talk to the whole family about this, particularly if you or your partner or spouse need to be working from home at the same time. Now boundaries involve setting time for learning for the children, but also setting some parameters about what constitutes something that they can bring to you in case of emergency sort of thing. So maybe have a list of items that if this is something that's going on, then maybe write it down on a sheet of paper and then you know every two hours or something we'll have a little family meetup time and kind of see what's going on with each other or every hour and then um, if it's something that's critical then they can come to you right away but establish those parameters now one thing we know from the homeschool community is that there are times that you have to shift gears if you're trying to have your kids have that same schedule that they have at school there's a lot of anxiety going on right now with having to be home. It's a lot of changes. So you may have to shift gears and you may need to do that quickly. And so even though you want to establish those boundaries, you also need to ensure that there is some flexibility. For instance, if it's time to do math and there is just an absolute meltdown, then maybe shift gears. And if you can take maybe 45 minutes away from what you're doing, then go into the kitchen and bake something together and turn that into a math opportunity where you can talk about, okay, we need a quarter cup of this. Now, how does that compare to a full cup? And you can use that to reinforce mathematical principles like fractions and measuring and things like that. Maybe have them do some conversions. And so it is still a learning opportunity, but you're shifting gears where it's more interactive. And these are really complicated times, not only for you, but particularly for your kids. So when the whole family is home working and trying to get work done, people naturally are more efficient and effective when they have larger chunks of time. Now the kids may think that there's a problem or an issue that they're having, but maybe it's just the anxiety and they want some attention or reassurance. And so what you need to communicate with them, and this is also a great opportunity to teach them some independence, is that to is that they need to assess what the issue is. Is Are they having trouble in math? Is it something that they can just write down and then come to you later? This is going to teach them a little bit about self-reflection and it's going to teach them about prioritizing and also understanding what they're going through on their own emotional sort of roller coaster right now. And so by writing it down and coming to you later, they're also becoming a little more independent. Again, this is going to vary by age. If you have have really little kids it's going to be a lot more difficult if you have like a first grader or a second grader it's going to be a little harder than if you have someone in middle school or high school but as much as you can turn these into opportunities for learning and you can teach them skills that they'll be needing throughout the rest of their life so you're going to want to set a schedule and you'll want to mirror the schedule that they have in school that they already are used to doing so if first period or the first subject that they learn is english you're going to want to make Make sure that they're doing English, whether it's grammar exercises that are emailed by the school or something that you print out off the internet to keep them, you know, like sentence diagramming is a great thing for them to be working on right now at home because they can do that sort of independently. And so you want to keep the arrangement of their school day as close to what they're used to as possible. This is also going to help ease some of the anxiety with all of the change because at least something will be normal and familiar to them. 
Now the kids are also used to hearing a bell and a great idea is to set a timer. Now I wouldn't necessarily recommend if they have a phone setting a timer on their phone because you wanna try to keep the phones and electronics away while they're working on their schoolwork, but set an alarm clock, an oven timer, an egg timer for the normal amount of time that they would be working on something in school. So if they have 60 minutes and then the bell rings for recess, then set the timer for 60 minutes and then have it go off. And and then set it again, say if they have a 10 minute recess or a break, set it again and then when that 10 minutes is up, then they go on to the next subject. So you wanna keep that regular schedule and the use of a timer is really helpful because they're used to those bell schedules. Another thing you can do is everyone gets up at the same time of day. This isn't the time where the teenagers get to sleep in until noon. Everyone gets up, they take a shower or bath, have their normal routine, eat breakfast, but instead of getting out to the bus or to walk to school, they're going to just go and get their school books and their schoolwork for the day and sit in the house where they would normally sit. So make sure everyone is still going through that same morning routine. There's some psychology behind that. Now I work from home and if I don't get up and do my normal routine, then my whole day is thrown off and I it's hard to get into that work mode. And so that um, anything that can be normal routine right now is really, really important important. Another big difference is that they're used to going to school and then having a teacher lead them through their day. Whether they switch classes and have several teachers or just one teacher, there's someone guiding the activities and they may not have that now. And so what can be done is if particularly if the school is emailing work or they're putting lessons online, you can come up with a schedule every day and you can maybe spend five or ten minutes in the morning and say, okay, here's your lesson plan for the day. I need you to be a little independent today. Um, and again, this is going to vary on the age of the kids. And so you um, come up with that and then they can check off what they've done. And another thing is to have them write in a journal or in a notebook about the tasks they've done. Um, if they have any issues, if they had challenges, if something came easy, have them reflect on the work because it's going to keep them accountable, but it also keeps them writing and thinking about their work. Now, the school day may be a little shorter than the regular school day uh, for whatever reason, but maybe you can take this opportunity and have the whole family eat lunch together and talk about your morning. This is a great time to reconnect with your family as well. Now, again, that's going to vary by ages. Teenagers may be really having some social anxiety um, and may not really want to open up. But um, again, journaling is something really helpful that maybe they can write down some of their feelings even if they don't wanna share it with their parents. And I also recommend at the end of each day to go over if you set up a lesson plan or a checklist in the morning or even if they had been writing out throughout the day their sort of challenges and successes um, at the end of the day, it's great to sit down with them 5, 10, 15 minutes, make it a habit and talk about the accomplishments. Now, I wouldn't really focus on, hey, you didn't do this, you didn't do this, and make it a time where, you're, you know, it's, there's going to be a lot of angst or blame. Make it a time where they can celebrate what they did and talk to you about some challenges that they felt or even what they went through throughout the day. This is going to be really helpful and you may find that your family is becoming even closer in this time period. I hope some of these tips have been helpful and can help you figure out some things that you can do right from the beginning in these challenging times. Uh, for us here in Washington, again, there's no school, public or private, until April 24th, so we've got weeks ahead. And in some areas, they haven't shut schools down yet, and um, they may not. It just depends on each state and each school district on how they're dealing with this and how the virus spreads. We'll be posting more videos that will hopefully help you with some challenges, offer some ideas about activities and things that you can do when your kids are home from school, when you're not quite used to that. And if you're working from home, hopefully what we're offering will help you um, 
get the kids learning so you can also get your work done. Um, again, trying times and we're trying to offer as much support as we can here at the Pizan Academy. And check out our other videos on our YouTube channel. We have a lot of ideas and a lot of things that you can use um, as a sort of platform for family discussions or even discussion amongst you and some of the other parents that may be facing some of these same challenges. If you aren't facing these challenges, but you know a family who is, please share this video. We want to provide as much information out there to ease any sort of anxieties that may be arising. We also have links to our social media in the description below and stay tuned. We'll be offering some more support as the weeks go on. Have a great day.